Here we go. What's up? What's up? How's it going, guys? What's up? What's up? Hello from London. Hello from Florida. Yeah, we're on uh, Portugal. We got people from all over the world today on today's podcast interview. And this is Hello awesome. For anyone who has been living under a rock, we are here today with Venom Inc. Hey. Hi. And how we also doing? have Robert from Concert Junkies co hosting with us today. What's going on, guys? How's yeah, it going, everyone? Good to see you, Robert. <coughs> good to see you. All good? All good here? All good. How's it going, yeah. guys? All right, so I'm calling myself out for the public. A lot of people already know that I am hard of hearing, and I'm just letting everyone know my batteries died, and I'm in process of having those batteries delivered to me. So <laughs> the guys, I'm asking them to yell at me, so I apologize for that. Yeah, so if we're shouting, that's for a reason. <laughs> All right, so guys, would you like to introduce yourselves to, to everyone for those who miraculously may not know who you are? Yes, yes. Well, my name is, uh, I'm Jeremy Kling. I'm from Tampa, Florida, and I play drums for Venom, Inc. My name is uh, Jeff Dunn. Uh, I play in a band called Venom, Inc. I play guitar, and I live in Portugal. Uh, my name is Tony Demolition Man Dolan. I live in London and I play bass and sing for Venom Inc. Well, you guys, thank you so much for making the time to be here. I know you guys got chaotic schedules, and you know I've been staying on top. You know, staying on top of Tony to <laughs> to keep this going. You know, staying in contact, and here we are. We finally made this happen. So thank you so much for all you guys putting the time aside to make this happen today. No worries. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us here. So it's nice to be here. Thank you. All right. So there's so much I want to ask you guys. I know we have a short time to do it. So I'm going to do my best. And, you know, uh, what we like to do is obviously introduction, what you're currently going through, yada, yada. And I'm going to try to take turns with Robert, but I like to sometimes just take over and I keep going. <laughs> so, so very, yeah, yeah. it happens. So it's okay, though. He knows how I roll. So you guys have been crazily busy. You what? Yeah, I'm just saying Bob knows how you roll. You know how Bob rolls. We all know how Bob rolls, and Bob knows how we roll. And that's how we roll. Yeah, we've been kind of busy. Yeah, we've been busy. We finished our new album, which is now we're rolling up, and we have, uh, you know, uh, bits and pieces coming out leading up to the uh, album release. So uh, we had a couple of months ago, we had the first single out, How Many Can Die?, and uh, and then next week we have the second single, uh, Don't Feed Me Your Lies, coming yes. out. And uh, we have some talking heads and some uh, drum stuff going on and lot, lots of interesting stuff leading up to that. And, of course, we started festival season now. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we, we, we played with Belfagor and we did the Metallion uh, magazine uh, 30th anniversary. So we've done a bunch of stuff now and it's been really good. It's been good to be able to play with these guys. Um, and play with them on stage as well. We play with Lego when we're not on stage, and it's been nice to build houses and little things without Lego, and then go on stage and play music too. No, it's been great after two years just to see people and fucking travel and play music, you know? Almost, right? Almost three it had been that we hadn't <clears throat> seen each other. It was Bakken, so August 2019 was the last time we'd even, like, been in the same room with one another. So wow. it, was good to, it was good to see everybody and get hugs and, you know, yeah, it's good. It's good to catch back up. Oh uh, yeah, but you guys, you guys haven't played in three years up until this year, though, correct? Yeah, that's it. We had. And your last show was right here in Chicago before everything went to shit. Uh, yeah, well, we did play in Chicago, but uh, the la- the very last show that we did a mini tour after the Misfit show, we played at the uh, okay. the tri the tri state uh, arena with the Misfits and Power yes. Trip. Um, and then we did a series of shows, and then uh, we finished the season at Vakken, like Jeremy said, in 2019, and then we hadn't seen each other for three years before we started to play these shows we've just been playing. So, And it was kind of good because um, we had that layoff, but we also got to put the new single in the set, so we were debuting that as well, so it was kind of exciting for us and fun, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, um, so, uh, you know, obviously, you know, COVID screwed everything up for a lot of people, you know, the music scene, Oh, you know, it opened up a lot of time for everyone to just start recreating themselves, you know, and, and do a lot, you know, um, how, you know, what, how did you guys handle COVID? Were you guys doing okay? Did you just keep pushing forward? Uh, my <laughs> my life didn't change that much. I just kept doing uh, studio work. So I was able to focus on that. And I was able to, I had a self-imposed honeydew list of like shit that I needed to do around my house. So uh, that I've written for me. Like I had to build a fence and I had to do this and I had to do this and paint that. So I got all of that done. So it was pretty good. It was pretty good for me. I, I yes, live, so. my studio is at my house, so I was able to just keep recording. It was pretty much status quo. Nothing really changed for me other than I couldn't go tour. So that was the, the big change. But uh, that aside, I mean, I was just able to really just keep working. So for me, it was, it was okay. It wasn't so bad. It was nice to be home. Oh, that's good. It was the first time in all of my kids' lives that I was ever home for everybody's birthday. I've always missed someone's birthday for the history of the, the all of my kids, right? So this is the first time that I was home. I got everybody's birthday, so that was kind of a bit of a silver lining for me. It was pretty sweet. Well, that's good. That's good, man. How about you, Jeff? Mm -hmm. uh, pretty much the same. I mean, I, I had been getting asked to do things which I was putting off all the time, and um Eventually, I did it, so I've started working on some solo stuff. Uh, I opened a Patreon page, um, and so far, I've written 16 guitar instrumentals for patrons every month, and artwork and videos. I've been digging up videos from the old Venom archives. Um, and one of the big things for me was I built my cat sanctuary in my back garden. So I've got uh, a total of 21 rescue cats now. Um, and that a lot of the Patreon stuff goes towards helping out the little rescue critters and stuff like that, you know. So that's basically what I was doing. Um, but I mean, I, I'm pretty antisocial anyway, so it didn't bother me, you know. I'm not, I'm not um, you know, people say to me, Wow, how the hell do you get up on stage and do what you do when you're so quiet, you know, you're so reserved, you don't say anything. It's like you know, it's there's two different sides to it, really. I'm I'm quite reserved off stage, but on stage, you know, it's like it's a release for me, you know. But uh, ironically, I mean, you know, we we were saying there August. I think it was August the 11th. Vakan was the last show, and then the next show that was penciled in after that, I think it was going to be February in 20, 2020, and it was Beijing. And of course, then fucking. COVID hit, where did it come from? It was all the, the, the Asian territories and stuff like that, so all our Asian dates just went down the pan, but we were sitting at home thinking, well, it, won't, it, sh it should be okay, because the next run of shows is in Italy. <laughs> of course, what happens? Fucking the land, boom, you know, everything yeah. goes. So right. that, that was the <laughs> start of it, and then everything just went downhill from there, for the live scene, obviously, but... Um, it gave us the opportunity, I suppose, as well, to just sort of kick back and go, well, you know, this is a world situation that we cannot do anything about. So um, it gave us the time to concentrate on the album. And um, that's that's basically what we did. You know, we had that little bit extra time to, to take the time to do the album because at the end of the day, there was no point in rushing to put the album out because we just didn't know when live shows were going to come back. You know, we could have put an album. Technically, I suppose we could have put an album out at the, at the end of 2020. You know, but, you know, it would be dead in the water now. It would be time for the, ne the next one, you know, because it, there would be nothing out there to promote it. So it kind of worked in our favour in a way, if you like. And, I mean, Tony Tony had to have his, his hip operation and stuff. And, I mean, I, you know, a couple of years previous, I had had the heart attack and stuff. So it was nice to take a little bit of a break as well. Because we're not uh, we're not young spring chickens anymore, you know. So um, it was time to kick back a bit. And even now on the live dates, we've we've pulled back a little bit. But having said that, you know the shows that are in at the moment, because of what people are seeing, we're getting more offers coming in. And it's um, that's a that, that's a pretty hefty compliment for us as well. You know to think that people are seeing the shows and they're thinking. We want that, 
you know. So um, I think that I, looks good. I think that's a good point. Uh, we we had worked so hard, and we had you know we had our nose to the grindstones. So we were doing uh, constant shows, constant touring, you know, and and it's kind of uncomfortable. Everything everybody thinks there's this. Wow, I'm so you're so lucky to be doing that. And in a way, of course you are. You get to travel the world and be on airplanes and be meeting people and eating different food and absorbing different cultures. But it's also you don't get much sleep. You don't get washed very regularly. You're not eating the best food most of the time. So you're in a constant perpetual yeah. state of tiredness and uh, performing. So if, if that was the advantage of the pandemic, we did get to uh, just relax a bit and focus. Um, on things that we don't normally get time to focus on, and particularly for our health, we could relax and, uh, and we could recover somewhat rather than just touring. And I, I most most of the pandemic, I whittled this this plastic spoon. If you could see that, I whittled that with a small knife from a canoe that was 18 foot long. So. That's what I did mainly. Uh, and I, I've eaten yogurt with it and <laughs> vegetables, and it's really, really good. That is too funny. <laughs> That's what I did. Well, guys, I want to let you know Marla has joined us. She's also one of the savages. Hey, Marla. Marla. Hey, sorry, I, sorry I came in late. I'm going to try to stick around as long as I can. My truck's in the shop, so I'm back here hanging out with all these wrecked cars so <laughs> i'm in the sun okay. so you can let the glare so uh at least i can hear you yeah that's it that's true and marla don't worry because it doesn't matter when you come as long as you come that's what i've heard anyway yeah that's, <laughs> that's true <laughs> as long as you come it doesn't it matter how go. long how long the come is just as long as you do yeah. Well, usually I dress better than this, but I'm outside and it's hot and miserable and that kind of, you know. <laughs> okay. Well, usually I dress better than this. Well, okay. I've asked a few questions and I've cut that. I've cut Robert off. I know he's been patiently waiting. Robert, go ahead, hon. Well, okay. I've asked a few questions and I've cut that. I've cut Robert. So, what would you guys want to leave as your legacy? I've asked a few questions and I've cut that. I suppose for, for me, just the so music. You, you know that that. I mean, what what else can you leave? A, a fucking logo, an image. You know, you know what it is. I've all, I've always said <laughs> music. You know, because I'm I'm pretty old school when it comes to stuff like that. Um, logo in the world. I'll be right back. Okay, the best okay. Image in the world. But at the end of the day, a band is about music. It doesn't right. matter. You know? yeah. So my legacy, I hope, is going to be it's going to be the music. It Tony matter. wants to leave a spoon I, behind. I think I'd agree with see. that too, Rob. Yeah, the spoon, of course. Yeah, the spoon. my canoe, whittling did. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I want to get a piece I, of I think, yeah, I'd agree. It sounds really bad. Never mind. I, I'd agree with Jeff. It's uh, the music is the legacy. You know, the music that you leave for the fans. So, do you have a personal legacy, not just music? Personal legacy. Wow. Yeah. Um. I just, I just. Your daughter, thought, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my, my daughter, my grandkids, um, things like that. And I just hope I've left a positive impression on them. You know, and give them, give them every opportunity that possibly can have in life. You know, I mean, um, I remember when my daughter was seventeen, she got awarded this, this thing for her academic qualifications, and it was to go to India on a trek. And she came back completely changed. And she was going to go to university and all this. She wanted to be a veterinary surgeon. And she come back and she said to me, you know, wow, that, that really changed me. And I don't know if I can spend seven years of my life in a classroom, you know. And I was like, whoa, you know. I mean, I threw everything away. I walked out of the school gates on a Friday afternoon and, you know, started work on a Saturday morning. 
worked as hard as I could to get some money to start. Said, you know, there's no way I can preach to you. So, you know, you've got to find your own way. Like you've got to do what they say. <laughs> Who is that? I have no idea. Wow. What the hell was that? <laughs> that was bizarre. That was bizarre. Um, I mean, somebody's, I don't know, maybe it's somebody's phone. I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea what the hell just happened. But okay. <laughs> Sorry for that mild yeah. interruption. I'd also, I'd also second that with, with uh, Mantis, with Jeff, uh, that I think that's the legacy. You know, that. Uh, that are offspring or that are friends and younger people in particular, fans, younger fans, because we have, you know, uh, both myself and Jeff have worked with uh, kids who have autism. And uh, I work with, uh, you know, uh, poor kids uh, who uh, I do a thing every year for them for a food bank and stuff to get them through Christmas. So I think that kind of positivity we give back. Um, you know, when we played a show, we recently played a show in France and um, a guy wrote to me and said, Tony, um, I want to ask my long-term girlfriend if uh, she'd marry me. Is there any way I could do it during your concert? So I said, yeah, absolutely there is. So we brought him on stage. I brought him on stage and he proposed to her on stage. And then we brought her up and, and it was a wonderful thing. So, you know, those kind of positive attributes we try and pass through because our music... Uh, all of our music, you know, uh, combined and, and singularly has, has been inspirational to some people. Those are the stories we get from losing a family member to cancer to a rough patch with their relationships. And they all come with these stories, how it, uh, it helped them to get through. So, um, you know, hopefully through our personalities as well, we, we give a positive approach to go, you know, it's, it's easy to be a dickhead, but it's also... It's even easier just to be nice and just to be very generous with your time. And, you know, there's plenty of times that, that someone seems maybe not the best person, but we don't know what they're, what they're dealing with in their lives. So just yeah. spend a bit of time to get to know that and, uh, you know, spread a bit of positivity around. That's what we're about, really. Well, yeah. That's great. Uh, Marla has sent me a message. Uh, that was one of the things that turned the volume off. I apologize. <laughs> um, uh, she lost reception because she is outside. She lives in Southern Indiana, which is kind of in the middle of nowhere. So okay. she's gonna, she said she's going to walk down the street and walk elsewhere to log in with a be um, better reception. And uh, I think my savior just showed up. Your can man. Your can man. He's got your can. I need, I need a lot more than coffee. Thank you. Um, well, Thank you. <laughs> yes. Uh, sorry about that. No worries. My favorite just showed up. Um, you don't have to yell at me momentarily. You know, what the shit open there? What if I want to? Um, yell at you, it really okay. sucks. I actually lost my hair. Started losing my hearing when I was ten. It was not from the music like a lot of people think. You know, I remember. Remember growing up, they always did the vision and hearing test. Yeah. 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 My shit started bombing when I was ten. So it sucks, but. I will get there. Robert, go ahead. While I'll put my batteries in. <laughs> well, that sounds really bad, too. <laughs> yeah. Hi. <laughs> it's freaking my dog out. <laughs> All right. So if you could... It's the pick, wrong batteries. So if you could pick your own bill, who would you want on it? Uh, William Ooh. S. Burrow. Uh, what are some... Uh, bill hit... Uh, Bill Hicks, he could come along too. We need some other famous Bills. Who else? Bill Lambert, he used to play basketball for the uh, Detroit Pistons. Did did he um, did he not mean your famous musical Bill? Oh, are you, are you just going to take people called Bill with you? Yeah. Oh, he okay. meant musical. Okay. All right. I think so. If you had your best your best <laughs> Bill, um, I can't think of many Bills. Bill Clinton, <laughs> Bill Murray. Bill Cosby? No, Bill maybe Bill not Baggins. anymore. He's, no. <laughs> yeah, Bill Bo. Yeah. Let's get back with it. I think, I think, can I just say that I couldn't, I can't think. I'd probably have the Dickies, the Motorhead, something like that, the Sex Pistols. But Jeff will definitely have Judas Priest and Kiss. I bet. If you ask him, I bet he'll say Judas Priest and Kiss. I bet. Ask him. Ask him. Frank Marino, 
Gary Moore, Zach Wild. <laughs> uh, See, I told you you wouldn't say kiss or Judas Priest. <laughs> uh, I mean, for me, for me, think, thinking of actually I, I would I would <coughs> that I wanted to see but I never had the opportunity to see one would be thin Lizzy yeah the um, mm -hmm. the live and dangerous lineup which I think is even though I'm a huge Gary Moore fan I think the live and dangerous lineup is the classic lineup with Brian Robertson classic lineup thin Lizzy I actually never got to see Motorhead in any way shape really? or form. never got to see them I was always away on tour when they hit Newcastle I never got to see them so I would definitely want to see the original lineup, Filthy, Fast Eddie, and Lemmy. I would want to see that. Um, Frank Marino and Mahogany Rush. I would love to see that. Um, and I suppose I would like to see Hendrix as well. You know, so people that I never and 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 I suppose uh, Deep Purple with Richie Blackmore, Ian Gillen. You know, another yeah. classic lineup of that. Um, I mean, I've seen Priest so many times. I've seen Kiss so many times. I saw Gary Moore, God knows how many times. Um, all heroes of mine, of course. I've seen Zach Wilde, another hero. Um, but on the on the side of bands that I never got to see, it, it would be bands like that. Yeah, I would love to go back and see that kind of thing. Yeah, it'd be great. If I had the chance, I would go back and see Kiss in, I don't know, 73, 74, something like that. You know, real early days, you know pre even pre Cobo Hall, I would love to see, you know, what they were doing back then, you know, when everything was so basic and just, you know, when they were a dangerous rock and roll band, really, you know, when everybody considered them, oh, you know, before they came, as Paul Stanley said, the Ringland brothers, you know, before they came a circus. Mm. Um I mean I've always loved Kiss. I mean I would I'm not I've got no intention of going to see this um end of the road tour. Um because I've seen them in every inception. Um, and I think this, this for me, was the, although musically, yes, it's very good and all that, you know, I think it's the weakest inception that they've had. I mean, I loved, um, you know, they were good with Vinnie Vincent. I've seen them with Bruce Kulik. And I was lucky enough to see the original lineup as well, which you can't top. Um, same with Priest. I don't think I would go see Priest again, to be brutally honest. I'm fucking Team KK through and through, you know. Um, even though Richie Faulkner's fucking ridiculously good, absolutely incredible guitarist, um, but no, I think that's that's what I would go for. It would be the bands that I wanted to see that I, I never got the chance to see, and Slade and T Rex, definitely, yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, you guys, you know. You guys have had one hell of a chaotic jump into 2022 already since your comeback after three years, you know, because of everything. Like, literally, you guys are blown up, like, blown up big time. You've had some mass, you know, fests that you're just getting hit up with um, left and right. Um, can we talk about – one thing I'm curious about, and I didn't ask before we went live, but can we talk about Brazil? Yeah, sure. I mean uh... – What happened with that? Well, you know, we, it was it was it was a guy we never dealt with before. You know, usually when we go down there, I deal with the people I've been dealing with for like 30, 30 odd years, and and uh, I never had any problems down there. A lot, lots of bands that go down there would contact me and go, oh, you know, we had this problem or that problem, you know, and and I'd kind of help them to navigate your South America. Right. It's not always so easy, but um, I, we never had any problems you know it, it, at any point with my people and this was the first time we went with somebody else um and it was recommended through an agent and um it, you know it was all cool everything was good we were a bit late getting or uh, uh jeff had to uh, uh wait for his passport so that took a little longer than we we hoped uh but it came in plenty of time and uh, the guy decided that the flights were then too expensive uh and uh and just didn't want to pay for the flights um and contractually it said that it didn't say that he had to get cheap flights it just said the promoter has to provide the flights but he decided he wanted to delay it and we'd already delayed mm. his, uh, the whole thing once already because of uh, the pandemic from 2021 right. uh, so I did, we were delaying to 2022 and now he wanted, because he didn't want to pay for flights, he wanted to delay to 2023. And I just, uh, you know, it was just too much. So um, that was fine. We agreed that, okay, let's look at redoing the dates then. 
And uh, then he went online and obviously to get himself out of jail with his fans who bought tickets, he decided to say that uh, we refused to get injections and we weren't playing communication and we didn't do everything in time and we were looking for excuses and just made all this bullshit up. So I had to confront that straight on because, you know, um, I think in life, you 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 respond to people the way they talk to you. You're nice to right. me, I'll be nice to you. You're not nice to me, I won't be nice to you. But don't go away and whine about that because you started not being nice. So I just, uh, I went toe to toe with him and uh, he wanted to cite contracts. So I said, well, we can go legal if you want because uh, you've negated your own contract. But we made sure I got his money back and uh, I made sure that he paid the fans back because uh, I said that I would retain the advance and pay the fans back for the tickets myself if he didn't pay them back. But they, they were good. They got the fans all sorted. And now the idea is to go back down in 2023. But we're kind of busy now because, uh, you know, shows have just been bulking up. And, and we, um, right. we announced their 40th anniversary of doing the Black Metal album uh, as a kind of idea with Keep It True. And that went crazy. And now everybody wants us to do that as well. So we're going to have, between doing the 40th anniversary of the Black Metal album, sure... Yes. Happy Where birthday, by the way. Yes. We play I'm that not going to sing. That's not what I do. <laughs> it's entire, yeah, you should. You should. Um, but we play that in its entirety. And then we got a special show, Keep It True, where we'll be doing the Hammersmith show, where we're just going to blow everything up and smash everything, like just like the old days. And th- but we then have the album drop. So between the two things, we're kind of, we're kind of busy. And, of course, there, uh, uh, Jeremy... Um, uh, as in human condition, they've got their next album going out, their new singles going out, so he's touring with that as well. So we're kind of busy. And Je- of Jeff's Patreon, which uh, if you make sure that we'll post the link so you can go to Jeff's Patreon and support the cats and support his uh, music in there. So bet- <laughs> between the three of us, we're, we're kind of busy. And then we've got our music as well. And now the Black yeah. Metal show, so it's like it just went fucking crazy. And both Alcatraz and Bloodstock invited us to perform the albums there. And then we have another five or six coming in and more festivals. So it's good. It's good. You know, it's nice. I mean, the end of the day, it's always nice to go to a festival. It's always nice to do a tour. But but it's between you and the fans at the end of the day. So it's about people, you know, and them responding to your music. So that's the key for us. And I made this spoon out of a canoe. I don't know if I'm. I, I love you're not partying with that spoon, man. I'm just, <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm talking to one of my family members. You put spoons in your hand, your hands are flying. <laughs> yeah, look on the top. I made it looks like balls. I did it on the top. <laughs> <laughs> We're too anyway. They're so your blue balls are so small. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. That's so they are nice. they are quite tiny blue balls. <laughs> yeah. They're so cute. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I get thrown very quickly. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, but the Black Metal album, though, I mean, it's your fortieth anniversary, oh, your fortieth birthday, you know, happy birthday, and you know, you guys are gonna do, uh, you guys are got, you guys got two fests coming up where you're gonna give everyone a special treat and sing the entire album during your set. Yeah, that's killer. Yeah, it's gonna be the um, back, just the the whole album back to back, no talking, no bullshit. It's just straight on. Do that, do the album straight off. Pyro, pyro the crap out of everything, and um, it's basically gonna be the album in order as it is on the on the record. Opening with black metal, of course. Um, Keep it true will be slightly different. We'll be doing the singles which surrounded that album, um, possibly a couple of other sort of specials. Um, and that'll have the Hammersmith audience set from 1984. Um, but all the other shows, all the other black metal shows at the moment are just an absolute celebration of um, of the album itself. Because if we don't do it, who the fuck is going to do it? You know, and I mean, the, exactly. the, the, this album, this this album, black the black metal album, which, like it or not, started the whole fucking thing. Um, it you know it deserves to be celebrated in some way, shape, or form. So we said, yeah, we'll fucking do it. You know, I mean, well, that's good. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and to yeah. give to give people that you know because there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of younger fans that know about it and have heard the album too, and but they 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 weren't there to get that experience, and so we're very much a live band, and we thought let's let's make it. 
so that they can feel what it feels like to have that album, you know, for the first time. So it will be, it will be like, you know, the first, it's never been played live in its entirety. So this really? is this is going to be an experience, and with the pyros and with the whole, you know, it's it's going to be really something. So we're really looking forward to giving that to people in a celebration of a seminal album, an album that influenced so much, you know. Oh yeah, that's awesome, Marla. Welcome back. How's your awesome. stuff? Hey, I am so sorry that train wasn't even supposed to come by yet. So. My truck's oh fixed and I pulled over to the gas station. So I'm sitting at a gas station now. Okay. That was a train. Uh, we wondered what that was. We were like, what the fuck is that? It was a train. Yeah. Was a train. So I was trying to get out of here to as fast as I could. And I just had to shut my phone off to do it. I'm so sorry. Anyway, anyway, because of the train, you missed my little blue balls. But there they are. Let me see. Uh, there they are. <laughs> Oh, I love yeah. them. Thank you. Mate, I got to, you can Tony, quit take a look me, man. I got so much shit I want to say every time you hold your balls up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we got Will Dunham from the Dreamer's Life. He's got a question and says, has Venom been able to perform with Lordy from Finland? Uh, yeah, no. I've had the opportunity. You know, I've been to Finland plenty of times, but, um, and we're going to Finland to do the black metal show, I do believe. Um, but no, we've never played alongside those guys. No, no. Maybe we'll no. do the Eurovision Song Contest. I don't know. Yeah, they did it. We should do it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> like my little blue balls. We'll do it like a bluesy number. Like my little blue balls. Bring those babies on over here to the United States. They're on their way, honey. They're on their way. <laughs> You guys are just set me up for some shit, man. Stop. <laughs> I'm trying to be professional here. <laughs> oh, my God. Marla. You got me that. distracted. <laughs> you distracted. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Marla. <laughs> Go ahead, sweetheart. <laughs> Well, yeah, I've missed some of this, so I don't know if I'm going to be asking the same questions. Um, okay. We'll, we'll come up with different answers. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay. Pretty <laughs> okay. I was going to ask you about Bloodstock because that, I know you're going to be there in 2022, and that must be a, a, an adrenaline for that. How many times have you actually played at Bloodstock? This will be the second. This will be the second time. They're, they're, um the first time was actually 10 weeks. It was just 10 weeks after my heart surgery. So I had open heart surgery, and then 10 weeks later, I was on stage with Bloodstock. In fact, we did Alcatraz then Bloodstock, just like we're doing this year. Exactly the same. So Alcatraz was the first show, then Bloodstock. Well, like I say, it was 10 weeks after open heart surgery. So I'm wow. getting back there. It's, it's, um, it's going to be interesting. But like I say, that's the Black Metal show, you know, so we'll be on there just create absolute fucking mayhem and then off as quick as that follow that you motherfuckers yeah hmm. well we need you here in the united states yeah. well we're coming we're coming in the fall we, we, we're, we're planning a tour in the fall we start we start in atlanta with a big festival there and then we go we go uh, up the east coast and we get into chicago and then we'll come back yeah. in yeah. the beginning of the year and do the west coast but i just wanted to say that you know um um for anybody that's listening, the reason that uh, Bloodstock needed to fill a gap is because of Black Dahlia murder. Uh, uh, the, the guy committed yeah. suicide, which is very unfortunate. Yeah. And yeah. so, um, but that wasn't that wasn't a consideration. I guess they just uh, they knew we were doing Alcatraz and they wanted to put something that would be, you know, kind of special in the way and uh, kind of you know just just to give the kids something. So. Nobody's been heartless about that. We haven't not considered that, and there will be dedications on the day to him. So it's very sad, but um, hopefully we can carry the torch that he would have done, you know, um, because it's all about the music. So and that's what gives us that uh, togetherness in the community. So hopefully we can do that and do him his memory justice too. That's awesome. I'm think, definitely looking yeah. forward to when you guys hit the Chicago I area. I'm definitely going to keep my eyes open for that. Yeah, I think you know, when you guys were out here last. Yeah, I'm, I'm a traveling, traveling fool, so I'll be right to the strand. What, Marla? 
I said, I'm a traveling fool from, from state to state, so I'll be right there with you, friend. Brilliant. Well, yes, you are, and you're traveling up here in a week and a half. Can't wait to see you. But we're not talking about that. That's about our events. So. Yeah. Um, Robert, go ahead, hon. I got a million questions, so I'm trying to get you guys in. All right, this is going to be a hard but fun one. <clears throat> Last Supper scenario, who's your 12 at the table? <laughs> well, I know who Jeremy is. Jeremy's an old Bills. Jeremy's an old going to be Bills. <laughs> who's there? Fucking hell. Living or yeah. dead or both? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Oh, no. holy fucking shit. Last you got to pick one female, though. Got to pick one. You got to have a Mary Magdalene. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. Um, oh, fucking hellfire. Hard. A hard one. Jeremy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeremy, uh, who would you have apart from all your bills? What just happened? I don't know. I think Jeremy can't hear us. Can okay, you hear so us? I'm just me. <laughs> Okay. Hello? Hello. Hi. Hi. What was the question again? I couldn't <laughs> hear it. You got a pretty mouth. <laughs> it's, a, it's the last supper. Who are your 12 guests? 12? Holy shit. Yeah. Really? <laughs> Living or dead? Damn. Uh, I guess I'll take all the surviving members of the Beatles. Um, I'll take... Uh, uh, I'll take a sharpshooter with me. Um, I'll have a, uh, well, he's got to be a very experienced marksman. And then I'll do a, I'll bring a sandwich guy who is really, who's just really good with sandwiches because when you're traveling, you only really get sandwiches. And I guess that's part of like touring is you're just, you're eating a sandwich so uh i need a good sandwich guy i'll take a i'll take my uh my two guys from this chat they could be there and then we should be somewhere around about like 15 for me already so i'll minus three and then i'll be at 12. Okay. what about your mary magdalene Ooh. i definitely have i definitely have a mary i want someone there from the scene of the crime like his mother or mary magdalene yeah I kind of, I think I'd take Julius Caesar, that would be interesting, uh, Albert Einstein, uh, Lemmy, of course, uh, Ozzy, that would be a laugh. I'd like to get these two as well, because I want them to enjoy what the fusion, what's going uh. on. Uh, yeah, I think Marlon Brando, um, maybe Robert De Niro, yeah. A sandwich yeah. chef. A very talented sandwich a re chef. A really talented sandwich chef. I'd probably take Gordon Ramsay just to come in the room and go, yeah. fuck off every five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Marla, go ahead, hon. I know you, got, you have limited time, too, so I'm letting you guys get in. I have so much. I also want to have a part two. <laughs> okay, well, I, I have another question. Um, if it's already been answered, that's fine. I just want to hang in and you know be here for you guys. Um, I, I seen on your page where you have the, the you have a chance to win the copy of the album and a drum, si drum head. six sign. Yeah. yeah. Uh, could you tell tell us tell us about a little bit more about that? Yeah, that was one of my questions too. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, well, that, that's a kind of co a first competition. It's leading up to the second single, Don't Feed Me Your Lies. And uh, if you uh, you pre-order on the digital stream, if you already have pre-ordered, you just submit your that you've done the pre-order, pre-save uh, of the single, and then you could get a chance to win the competition. It will be done at random, and someone will be winning. And I did have some aficionados who are collectors saying, that's not fair, I don't use... Spotify, I only use whatever, whatever okay, iTunes or whatever. Frozen and, or yeah, and there's some other people who just collect the vinyl, but this is one of many competitions we're going to be running. So there's lots of goodies to be had. 
and every step of the way we're going to run another competition so don't be down if you don't win the drum head or you don't enter for this there's other cool stuff coming so we're going to run the competitions all the way up to the album dropping in september so it's there's a bunch of stuff uh, come and we'll we'll keep going through from that so so you won't miss out i promise you won't miss out it's a pretty cool drawing of us too i think it's uh yeah pretty, it's pretty realistic <laughs> yeah i saw it. that was badass when i saw it. Yeah. Like, that's for as well that's you know yeah, gotta yeah. keep keep everyone active you know keep them looking keep them you know yeah. on that page. it's the right it's the right way to go oh yeah well you know i think one one of the things that we do is we like to engage our fans and we all spend time streaming jeff streams jeremy's always doing his input up stuff and we, we invite the fans to ask us questions and talk to them on social media and i think that's a big part of music you know it's uh, connecting with people and uh particularly exactly. young people who want to connect with you so you know it just takes some patience and you might be busy but it it only takes a moment to say hi how are you and and keep that keep that connecting going so to then be able to give them cool stuff that we you know that we can give is is also part of that so that's the idea <laughs> My next question is, uh, a three-headed goat, do you bring it home or do you sacrifice it? Wait, I missed that last part. Say that one again. If you have a three-headed goat, do you bring him home or do you sacrifice him? That's my question to you guys because I was, I was just going to ask a question. You know what? I'll join you. And I'll bathe in that bitch's blood. How about that one? Oh, all right, all right. In. Okay. Is his name Bill? It could be. Or Stan, you know. Some people like to call him Stan. Hmm. Too funny. <laughs> We're sick fucks, and I love it. I love this already. It's great. Um, let's see. Marla, you want any more? You want to go ahead and ask any more? I don't know if you guys are on a timeline. I know, Jeremy, you're going to be popping in and out. You know, you got to do you, and I get that. But, you know, if you guys want to keep going past an hour, just let us know. We still got we still got a few minutes. We're fine. Yeah, Who, I'll go ahead with one you... more question. I'll probably chime out here in a minute because my phone's in the heat and it's dying. Do you always, do you have a most memorable moment at any of your sto shows on stage? <clears throat> It's been really fun lately to go into uh, "Welcome to Hell" because we've been hanging on. Uh, we've been hanging on the previous song that we were playing right before "Welcome to Hell," and we leave this like big suspended note, and then all of a sudden Jeff just kicks into that, and then the vibe has been really shifting and been uh, very enjoyable. So for me, I guess as of our most recent shows, those have been some pretty fun moments there, just as like a like a group scenario. It's been fun whenever it kicks in. You know that and that and the occasional my shit breaking. That's always fun too, um, which is pretty much oh every God. show. I got it. This guy, this guy smashes the. It doesn't matter what drum kit they give him. No. Within ten minutes of him playing, it something's destroyed completely. Yeah, it's fuck. Like he just pulverizes it. It's so great. It's so great. Yes. Yeah. You? Hmm? Yeah. So let's yeah. see. Well done. He says thank you to the savages. I have to get. He has to get some for his eighty-seven-year-old mom. Chow, chow. Uh, for now, thank you, Venom. I would love to know what chow and thing you're getting for your eighty-seven-year-old grandmother. Let us know. <laughs> I, I I think he means goodbye. Um, usually, but it wouldn't be spelled like chow, like you're eating something. You know, just, you know. But you know, we'll see. Uh, we'll find out. Um, I'm pretty sure that's what he meant. I'm, I you know what? It's about the blue ball spoon. That's what it's about. Yeah. It's about manjin on the blue balls. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm, my water. I'm so sorry. I gotta go to work, guys. So I'm, I just okay. gotta bow out for now. But keep asking your questions and lots of love, and we'll see you soon. And thank you for this. But Thank I gotta you, go sir. to work. I work for Bye, Satan. Tony.
thanks for coming you. and thanks for uh Thank thanks you. for answering all my questions. Ciao. I as in it. I Thank you. Ciao. <laughs> ciao. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I get distracted. Man, I'm going to head out because my phone's <laughs> dying in this heat. So, guys, you guys got some. You, so, you guys, uh, you guys have played some major killer fest already. You guys have been jumping into shit, you know, left and right. Um, and you got Bloodstock coming up. Um, you got Alcatraz coming up. What else? Um, you got, what is that? Stonebreaker, which is, you know, you guys are heading out this way. What is that? Atlanta, I think. And whatnot. Um, what else you guys coming uh guys got coming up you got a, you got a new album you're re, uh, releasing in september yeah new album uh september 23rd i believe um there'll be four singles leading up to the album various videos and stuff and competitions and all that kind of thing um i think the last single that drops just before the album is the title track there's only black um shows wise there's there's a lot of shows i mean i've just got a list on my phone and i look at the date and say right i've got to be away this weekend or that weekend or whatever um so i don't really know what's there i just look at the phone and go right that's the next one get on the plane go up and do it um but yeah that, i mean the alcatraz and bloodstock thing they've literally just come in it's just happened and um you know, it's, it's going to be a couple of good things there because the, the Alcatraz thing, I mean, we are like virtually headlining that. Uh, I don't know which stage it is or whatever, but... Um, it's the main stage. It's the main stage, is it? Holy shit. Oh, nice. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't even... I just, I, I'm, I've been in this business too long, let's put it that way. I don't get excited about things anymore until I'm actually there on stage and doing it. You know, it's like, hey, Jeff, we're going to do this. It's like, yeah, whatever. You know, and um, <laughs> like, soon as soon as I'm there and I'm walking on stage with my guitar, that's when it's real. That's when it's happening, you know. Up until that point, being involved in the music industry since 1979, it can fall flat on its face at any right. point, you know. But until you're walking on stage, then that, that, that's a good point to be at. Um, but yeah, uh, I feel you at that. A lot of things coming up. I am sorry. sorry. I'm going to have to book on out of here. The heat is draining my phone. I'm glad that I was able to be here at least for you guys for a little while. And I hope to see you in the USA. Yeah, I will be there in the fall. <coughs> see you then. Marla, enjoy ya. your rest of your work then. I'll talk to you later. You got it. Yeah. Bye, huh? And then there was four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why do guys do that? Do, 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 can guys do that? I mean, I've never, I've noticed that. I've seen that shit. Can you, I mean, all guys. <laughs> we can. We just choose not to. All right, I'm gonna stay on point here because I'm already going left. <laughs> um, Robert, go ahead, hon. I'm gonna skip around on my notes. Since you've been in the industry for a very long time, what would you want to change about it now? Fucking hell. You know what it is? Today's industry, I mean, the, the internet and streaming and all that kind of stuff, it's, be, it's been a blessing and a curse. You know? Um, it's a curse on the fact that, you know, it's only, the, you know, the top earners who earn when it comes to the streaming side of things. It's definitely not like what it used to be. Um, but like I say, I'm old school. I mean, you know, when we first, when our first album came out, you know, we held that piece of vinyl in our hands. I, I can still remember being at Neat Records, being in the office at Neat Records when the first batch of Welcome to Hell came through and they opened the box and pulled out this album. And it was like, fuck, that, that is our album. And then no word of a lie. You know, we did it for Welcome to Hell and we did it for Black Metal. Myself and Kronos went up to the local record stores in Newcastle City Centre with a bunch of album covers and we created our own sort of displays in the shop, if you like. You know, we were, everything was DIY and, that, you know, it was just that was the way we thought things were going um, and the way it was meant to be. But the, I've, like I say, it's difficult for me now to 
so to really get infused and excited about holding a, a, a new product in my hand you know because it's it's sort of what i do and i think when you're that close to it sometimes it can i don't it's hard to describe i don't take it for granted i, I definitely don't take it for granted i don't take anything for granted because we are in such a privileged position at the end of the day any musician who can record his own work and have it released commercially to the public or who can set foot on a stage anywhere in the world and it doesn't matter how big that stage is we've been fucking out especially myself and tony when we had empire it, it, you know and even with enemy some of the sort of stages we've set foot on you know you look at the stage and go holy fucking shit you know mm -hmm. but for us it doesn't matter if there's 10 people there 100 people there a thousand or ten thousand or a hundred thousand you know when when i played a dynamo festival in 1996 there was 125 thousand people there it was fucking incredible you know but you know playing in front of a thousand people i would rather have a hundred people going absolutely fucking ape shit than a thousand music police standing there going you know it's you know as a musician you feed off the energy of the, of the audience you know so in that way and in that respect you know i've had you know when we've played small clubs in europe or even in the states you know i've had club owners coming over to me and go fucking hell man this it's unbelievable to have you here in my club it's like whoa whoa it's you know it's a privilege for me to be here you know because if nobody likes the shit that i'm doing nobody wants to fucking see it and that's where i say that any musician who does this successfully semi-successfully or you know is able to make a living out of it then you're a fucking you're a lucky motherfucker it's as simple as that um, and in that respect i don't understand especially at the lower level you know when you, when you see people who are like fucking rock stars it's like never ever call me a rock star never it's like you know my my opinion of myself is i'm a working musician always have been always will be it's as simple as that that's what i do it's what i do i don't know anything else you know um and yeah it is hard and as you get older it's harder but it's what we do simple as that guys i gotta go but it's been a pleasure thanks for having me thanks, thanks for joining us jeremy Jeff, I'll see you, you next week in uh, sunny old uh, Berlin. And, uh, you know. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks for having Thanks, me. Thanks, Jeremy. Have a good one, man. Good night. I've got to bow out in about 10. And now there is three. Right. And now there is three. You've got about 10 Ten. minutes before I've got to run. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have... Oh. <laughs> You brought the wrong batteries the first time I gave him the wrong number. Now I got the right ones at the end of the show. <laughs> Go figure. But I was able to hear everything. So I was, I'm glad. You guys are speaking loud enough for me. So thank you. And thank you. And okay. um, 15, uh, 15, um, Jeremy. Or I'm sorry, Jeff. Dude, you guys have been like seriously chaotic crazy. You know, you got so much going on. And you guys got your own stuff, your, your own projects that you're doing on top of it. You're helping other bands, you know, get involved with a lot of things. I mean, how do you handle your, do you have anxiety? Do How do you handle that? Um, no, I mean, you've just got to prioritize, really, you know, I mean, if it's, yeah. you know, when, when it came to doing the Venom Inc. album, it was like, well, everything else has got to go to one side. I do a lot of mixing and production for other bands, I do session work for other people, um, but, you know, as I was getting offers coming in to do that kind of stuff, I had to say, if you've got a deadline, you need to get somebody else to do it, because right at this very minute, I've got to concentrate on the Venom Inc. album. You know, and um, that was that was solid work every single day of the mixing and mastering of that until it was done. Um, but that, that's what I do with my, my stuff. It's like a priority. I mean, every month I have to do what is it, three videos, one guitar instrumental and artwork for Patreon. So I've got to get that done. You know, I'm, there's a bunch of other stuff that I do. I'm recording uh, like a solo thing at the minute as well, which is me 
exploring my vocals and everything because I did during the pandemic I did this cover of a, a track by the Dead Daisies called Resurrected which the, the, the sort of lyrics mean quite a lot to me um, and I just did it as a test to see if I, I've never even explored I've always wondered if I had a singing voice and the people that I played it to first were people that I trusted and who would give me an honest opinion not go oh you sound great you know you don't play it to your mom and dad do you and I'm like, hmm. oh, it sounds lovely you know so I played it to people who I knew would go Jeff that's fucking shit bin it right you know or you know <laughs> hey got something there and luckily it was like you know and I worked with a really good engineer a really good studio guy in Germany who was a very good friend but he's very honest as well and I knew he would say fucking press the delete button or you know yeah we've got something with the work so with the solo stuff that I'm doing it's more it's, it's it's sort of modern but it's it's more classic rock than anything else um but again that's been put on the back burner because of the live shows because venom inc has then taken over again so like i say with everything that i do personally it might seem like oh well you've got 24 hours in a day and it's like yeah but you know i've got a lot a lot of shit going on so you, you've literally got to prioritize right. it you know or you would go fucking crazy you know and yeah. sometimes you have to say no you know it's as simple as that yeah, I would love to have the frequent fire miles you guys have. <laughs> hmm. oh, <dear laughs> <Lord>. <laughs> Do you know what it is? One of the things, one of the things that we're doing now with, with all that is like we're insisting on, you know, like direct flights and stuff like that because we've done all our fucking, you know, flying to fucking, you know, like I, I live in Portugal, so I've got to go from Lisbon, you know. Right. So when we played uh, one of the American tours we did, for example, I had a flight to New York. So the agent, because it's cheaper, flew me from Lisbon to Paris, Paris to Boston, overnight stay in Boston in a fucking shit hotel, and then Boston to New York, right? <clears throat> 30 minutes before the show, guess where my guitar was? Paris. You know, it was like, oh, fuck's sake, you know, so now we go, we say, now direct flights we're, we're not bothered about all, all that kind of shit. and when the, the last south american thing we did we were in south america south central and mexico for five weeks and we did 33 flights in five weeks and sometimes that was two so. flights <laughs> and then straight to a venue to do a show after two flights you know and it was like whoa this is you know it, that's fine when you're you know when you're a young guy and you're fucking you know, it's it's all exciting and rock and roll and stuff, you know, but um not at this age. Thank you for the door of the morning yesterday. Of course. Hello, hello. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, that's too funny. Yeah, dude, that that's chaotic. I mean to be to be jumping around twenty minutes, half hour, this and that, things change. I mean my stress level would be through this. I can't, I couldn't imagine my, what I go through already is enough. I can't imagine from a musician point of view, what you guys are doing, bouncing around. I mean, that's intense. And you guys keep smiling and keep on your shit. So props to you on that. Hell yeah. Uh, you got yeah. So do you have anything else you would like to inform of your fan, um, your fans, anything coming up that hasn't been mentioned that you might be able to drop us in on? Yeah, well, not at the minute. No, I mean it's it's everything at the minute is geared towards the Venom Inc. album, the new album, um, and the shows that we're doing. And like I say, we're lucky enough to be getting asked to do these these black metal celebration shows, um, which are gonna. And, you know, I'm I'm actually looking forward to doing those as well. Um, it's going to be something different out of the out of the Venom Inc. thing. Um, yeah. But uh, no, I mean it. it like, like I say, everything's geared towards that, and basically my suitcase is permanently packed at the moment and just waiting to go. As simple as that, you know. So busy, 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 and like I say, you know, if nobody wants you, then you're in the yeah. shit. <laughs> so hmm. it's like, you know, grab it while you can. You know, I'm yeah, absolutely. You know? Grab it by throwing these blue balls. Do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah you gotta go for it. Hmm. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, Robert, is there anything else you'd like to ask them?
associates. Robert, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, I didn't know if you did, if there was a glitch or you just were thinking. I didn't. Know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, me thinking is a glitch. <clears throat> So is there anything important that you've ever left on tour? Left on tour? Yeah. Nope. Apart from sweaty stage clothes at the end of a tour. <laughs> Just throwing them in the fucking bin. Um, nah, I wouldn't. I would never say I've, I've done that. I'm pretty conscientious when it comes to all that stuff. You know, when, you, when you've been doing it for so long, you know, it's... it's <sighs> No, uh, there's nothing I've ever sort of left or lost or, or whatever like that, you know. Even, you know, like crew that we have, they're, they're the same, very conscientious, and it's uh, it's all taken care of, you know. So, no, nothing's ever lost or left. So, and that, that applies to equipment, personal items, or incidents. <laughs> so, it's like, you know. Out of all of you, which one is the, uh, I guess, peacemaker? More of, you know, comic collective when shit goes wrong. Pooh. Um, I really don't know. I don't know. I would, I would have said me, but my tolerance levels now are absolutely zero, to be brutally honest. In the early days of Venom, I was I was always the one who was in the middle to, to the point where I remember saying to the old manager way back, I think this was in the late eighties, so, so mid eighties, I saw it so like that, whatever. It was it was with the original lineup of Venom, you know, Kronos and Abaddon. And there was so much friction involved at one point where there was a um there was a lot of publishing coming back to us and Nate Records were fighting to get that publishing. We were fighting to sort of allocate it to somebody else. And there were so many arguments within the band as well that, you know, I was having to be the middleman and calling Conrad and calling Bray and calling this and calling that, you know, to the point where one night I was speaking to the manager and I says, the next run of T-shirts we get done, get me one done with fucking United Nations written on the back because that's what I feel like, you know. Um, but now, and it, it's weird, it's since, it's since the death experience, since the heart attack, I've come back... I mean, I was clinically dead for just over five minutes, and wow. definitely, definitely something stayed wherever I was. And I think whatever stayed there was compassion and tolerance. Because right now, I've I've got zero, no, no, no tolerance for fucking. You, you know, I'm, I'm saying compassion. That that's probably wrong. You know, I'm a very em empathetic empathetic person. You know, um, I pick up on stuff like that, and I'm very compassionate. But when it comes to, you know, just wrongdoing, there's there's no there's no tolerance anymore. There's no oh, let's talk about it. It's like, boom, it's off straight away. And that's not me. That's a that's a massive personality change for me, because I've always said I've got the longest fuse in the world, but when it goes off, hit the bunkers because. You know, and I, I know that, and I, I've I've always said that that that's why I don't. That's why I'm the quiet one in the band. That's why I was always the quiet one in the band, because I know that I've got that side of me, you know. Yeah. And I always kept it under control. Always, you know. I would always walk out, and that was it, you know, and fucking whatever. Head down the gym, hit a bag, or whatever I did. But um, it's it's a weird. Thing which happened when when all this 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 happened to me it was like so I, I don't know don't know I'm more I'm more akin now to arguing my point of just being you know this is the way it is type of thing you know um, but people who know me well they know it's like whoa you you know there's this there's, there's a definite difference you know since what happened. i mean it happened four years ago but um i don't know i don't know but it's uh has it changed me for the good i don't know i don't know i still do you know what do you know what it is 
after all that happened to me, I still find it every day asking myself, why the fuck am I still here? Why me? Because while we were on a European tour, I got the news that Killjoy from Necrophagia had died. He had a massive heart. I was so close to him. He had a massive heart attack and he died. Then we come off tour. I have the heart attack. And then after my heart attack, the photographer who was on tour with us in Europe, he died of a heart attack. So two good friends either side of me died. I came wow. back and I was I was like, why the, f how, what? I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. You know, and it, it, it has. It's, you know, I mean, I've got a fucking eight inch scar down the middle of my chest where the fucking ripped me open to fucking access my heart. But I think the scars up here are even worse, you know? Um, it's a it's a massive. I've, I've I've researched so much about it, and I've spoke to people like there's there's fans as well that I didn't know. Have fans in America who have become good friends. I've got a painting over there. It's a watercolor painting of Australia, and there's a good friend of mine in the states painted it for me because I've got an Australia tattoo here. I don't know if you see that, right? So I've got the Australia tattoo there. So he painted a, a picture of Australia with a mantis tattoo. That's killer. Right? And I was like, wow, that, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. But I didn't, I didn't realize, you know, until I spoke to him, I sat down at dinner with him one night before a show. He had the same experience. I mean, in a different way, but he died. You know, and I've spoken to so many fans as well who've come over to me and shook my hand and went, wow, you know. And then a lot of people who have come over and went, hey, welcome to the Zipper Club, you know. Every, like fuck, there's so many. It's happened to so many people, but everybody's experience is different. So different, you know. And it's 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 something that I don't know. I'd love to get to the bottom of, but I don't think I ever will. I don't think I ever will. Yeah. But that's the hence the title of the album. There's only black because that track is written about my experience. What happened to me? No, so, and then it became the title of the album. Beca and it became the title of the album not because not just because of that, but because it's such a poignant thing. It's the first album back after what happened to me. But also, there's a track there called Tyrant, um, which was written way, way before what's going on in Ukraine right now. But it's about that and about the tyrannical regimes and all, all this kind of stuff. So there's a lot of stuff on the new album, which is very poignant to today's world. And what we tried to get away from in that album, the fucking demons and devils were all that's bullshit. Mm. You know, it's like fucking. I, I got horns on my head all the time when I'm on pipe, when I'm on my interview, so I'm okay with that. <laughs> It's like, you know, all that fucking angels on clouds and devils and fucking hell and fire. Fuck off. It belongs in a horror right. movie. You know, man is the ultimate good. Man is the ultimate evil. We are capable of the most benevolent good and the most amazing love. We are also create capable of the most disgusting evil. Yeah. We yeah. are the demons and we are the gods. You know, you know this, I don't fear any fucking thing with fucking horns and a forked tail walking through my studio door now. What I do fear <laughs> is some fucking maniac with a machete walking yeah, through the door. You know? That's human yeah. darkness. You know? Human darkness is what, and that's what we speak about on the album, on the new album. Human darkness. Far worse than anything else. You turn on CNN, news channel, and you'll see far more disturbing images than any fucking... Yeah. 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 And that's another thing that I brought back from my experience. You know, right. now it's always fuck all. You know, nothing. Only black. I get that. Yeah. There you go. There's the album title for you. Well, yeah, that was a bit it's... deep, wasn't it? Fuck you know. hmm. yeah, The unfortunate truth of life, you know? Yeah, it, yeah. Is. it is. It is. It yeah. is. It's unfortunate, you know, because you know you, you see you see what's happening in the world and you see you know whether it's war or it's individual crimes or something and you think will this fucking species never learn from its fucking mistakes will it never learn 
that this is not right. This is not good. You know, this is. You know what? You, you know, last night on the news, I was watching some village being evacuated. There was three old people taken from their homes and evacuated. You can hear the shelling going on around them. The combined age of these three individuals was 312 years. They were old, old people sitting. They refused to leave their homes. They'd lived in this village all their life. The village was uninhabitable. It was bombed the fuck. Like, you know, I, I don't get it. I never will. No. I never will. I'll never understand no. it. And we never will. None of us will. No. None of us will. We can have all the questions in the world and we're never going to see those answers. No, and the ones we do get are the ones we don't want to hear. We'll never fucking learn and it'll happen again and again and again and again until some fucking lunatic goes big red button. There you go. Then we're all fucked. Yep. And then you know what my theory is after that? After nuclear war, when the first fucking organisms crawl out the swamp, and then human life starts again, and then thousands of years later, and then we gain some intelligence, and they start building towns and cities. There'll be some human who's excavating somewhere, digging, and they'll find a book. That will become the new Bible. And Harry Potter will be our new God. There you go. I don't doubt shit anymore. Everything seems completely <laughs> plausible the way shit is these days. I don't doubt that for a second. Fucking mental. Absolutely mental. But anyway, that's that sort of is the theme of the album, you know. It's um, man's fucking absolute insanity, really. It's it's so fucking. Up. But like I say, you know, there's there's still a lot of good people out there. Thank fuck for it, you know. Right. And I think at the end of the day, that's all you can do. You can just try and be the best version of you that you possibly can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I agree. There you are. Take yeah. it from somebody who's been there. Dying is shit. <laughs> Don't do <Right>? it. <laughs> <laughs> shit, right? Jeff, thank you so much. Thank you to the guys. Even when they're not here, I know they might watch it later. Thank you so much for making the time out for us. You know, yeah. I've been staying on top of you guys. You know, I know you guys are chaotic with your schedules, and we made a special edition. And I was like, I'm gonna make this shit happen. <laughs> <laughs> and just thank you so much, um, Roberts. Anything last thing you would like to ask them? No. Actually, no. I don't have anything else. Mm. Okay. All right, Jeff. Uh, what platforms can people find you guys on? Where can they look you up? Your concerts, oh, your merchandise, okay. anything you got coming up? Facebook, Instagram, we're all over the place. Fucking, you know, it's fucking mine's, well, I don't even know where it is. Jeff Mantis done on uh, Facebook and Instagram, I believe. I think it is, or Jeff Mantis, something like that. Whatever. I'm not, I'm not a fucking techie person, so just go and then type it in, see what happens. Venom right. Inc, obviously, it'll bring it up. The Venom Inc website is there as well, the official website. Um, you can check me out on patreon.com forward slash Jeff Mantis. You know, you can have a look around there. Lots of cool stuff on there. I've got my own website, jeffmantis.com. Um, Jeremy's got in human condition, but in, you know, check out Tony's Atom Craft site as well, you know, because we've all got other things, you know. But as I say, you know, the Venom Inc. thing at the minute is the priority. So that's where the focus is right now. Awesome. Well, I definitely look forward to the album coming out in September. Your uh, second release of your single from um, that album on what, June 17th? You got the second release coming? Yeah, June 17th. Don't Feed Me Your Lies. Yeah, that's the new single. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yep. Looking forward to it. I can't wait to get that album in my hands. Mm -hmm. And whenever you guys hit the States and you come to Chicago and everywhere else but i'm in chicago so all i care about is me <laughs> we'll be there. definitely look forward to seeing you guys man yeah. man love and respect yeah. again thank you robert thank you for joining me today and you guys have a thank beautiful day. Me. happy yeah. hump day cheers now see you soon